Good morning, children. I hope you were able to do the numericals of conservation of energy. If you have any doubts, you can clarify it in Zoom classes. Today, we'll continue with Chapter Three, Machines. I know you have studied this chapter before. You've seen some other videos and you've understood the concepts. But today, I thought I'll just tell you. how to study from this chapter and what to study right so the first thing functions and uses of simple machine first thing is state the functions and uses of simple machine so there are four functions lifting a heavy load by applying less effort second changing the point of application to a convenient point third changing the direction of application to a convenient direction fourth for obtaining gain in speed so these are the four functions of a simple machine okay now we can straight away come to the definition of mechanical advantage and velocity ratio what is mechanical advantage it's a ratio of load over effort coming to velocity ratio it is the ratio of velocity of effort upon velocity of load and it can be further derived and this is the formula that we usually use velocity ratio is distance travel by effort upon distance travel by load okay velocity is not uh, easy to find so this is the one that we'll be using practically for all the numericals and other things distance travel by effort upon distance travel by load remember for ma load is in the numerator effort is in the denominator but for vr velocity ratio effort distance travel by effort in the numerator and load in the denominator denominator okay so these two things uh, you have to remember then work input work done on the machine by the effort so always remember effort is input and load is the output how much ever effort we are putting that is the input and load is the output so work done by the work done by the effort is called work input work done by the effort is work input and in the next page we have work output so work done by the load is called as work output the next term is efficiency so efficiency will be output work output upon work input efficiency is output upon input okay so usually it is in percentage so it will be work output upon work input into 100 and it has no units okay the next is principle of a machine principle of machine so output energy is equal to input energy but that's for an ideal machine so what is the principle for an ideal machine output energy is equal to input energy so what is an ideal machine a machine in which there is no loss of energy which is not practically possible efficiency of an ideal machine is 100% coming to actual machine is the one in which output energy is always less than the input energy there are some loss of energy during operation okay now this is one question that comes often give three reasons for loss of energy in a machine okay what are the three possible reasons due to which energy is lost in a machine first one moving parts or neither weightless nor smooth second string is all three should come second the string in it is not perfectly elastic third its different parts are not perfectly rigid please memorize these three points then next is relationship between efficiency mechanical advantage and velocity ratio so sometimes this derivation also comes so i told you input will be effort so work input is effort into distance travel by effort output will be load so work means load into distance travel displacement of load force into displacement just now we did the chapter work chapter so work output is again force is load into displacement of load so that is how you get and from this you get this relationship ma upon vr or efficiency is equal to ma upon vr or ma is equal to ma is equal to efficiency into vr so this derivation also sometimes comes so you should 
know this derivation also then coming to levers so we are going to see two types of machines in this chapter one is levers the other one is a pulleys okay so we'll start with levers now so what is a lever it's a rigid rigid straight bar which is capable of turning about a fixed axis so then principle of lever clockwise moment is equal to anti clockwise moment that is the principle so load into load arm is equal to effort into effort arm so from this you get this that we get this formula that ma is equal to effort arm upon load arm so only for levers this will apply that mechanical advantage is effort arm upon load arm because principle of moments can be applied only for levers okay so um if effort arm is greater than load arm ma is equal to if this is both are equal ma will be equal to 1 if this is greater ma will be greater than 1 if this is lesser than this ma will be less than 1 okay next is kinds of levers class 1 class 2 class 3 i'm sure you're familiar with all this so in class for class 1 levers ma can and velocity ratio can have any value greater than 1 equal to 1 or less than 1 this is the only class in which all three possibilities are there so then the examples they'll give you an example and ask you to identify the lever or sometimes they ask you to draw the diagram and mark the position of load effort and fulcrum so at least a rough diagram you should be able to draw so get used to it now three different uh, ma's are there and three different applications are there okay so the first one when the effort arm is longer than the load arm mechanical advantage and velocity ratio is greater than 1 then it is used as force multiplier the question can be when can a class 1 lever be used as a force multiplier when effort arm is longer than a than the load arm and examples could be crowbar claw hammer pliers etc okay then if both are of equal length then both its ma and vr are equal generally this is used for measuring or for entertainment like a seesaw and all that doesn't have much specific application as a machine okay. come to this when effort arm shorter than the load arm ma and velocity ratio is less than 1 then it is used to obtain gain in speed this is so when will it have its ma less than 1 and what is its application of how where is it used it is used as gain in speed now you hope you understand this term gain in force and gain in speed gain in force means you apply less force and more work is done gain in speed means you apply means or you move the effort through a less distance load moves through a longer distance for example take a pair of scissor so in case of a scissor so suppose um this is our scissor now this is not this is not how it looks usually this fulcrum is somewhere here okay somewhere here normally in a scissor if you the scissor that is used for cutting papers and all the fulcrum will be here so that so here will be a load you will keep your paper or thing here so that is load and this is effort you will be holding here so this is your load arm and this is your effort arm so purposely the effort arm is the load arm is made longer than the effort arm so that what will happen to your ma ma will be effort arm upon load arm and because this is this is smaller and this is larger this will be less than 1 same way vr will also be less than 1 now i will be moving the um this is a only this much okay this i'll just bring them together i will move the 
effort only this much but the load would have moved this much in the sense it will cut your paper or cloth for a longer distance you would have moved this only for a less distance but it would have cut the paper or cloth for a longer distance so this is this is example for force multiplier okay you move the effort through less distance but the load moves through a longer distance okay now this is scissor there's another one called pliers in your diagram itself in your examples there are two things so one is a scissor so you have the scissors here and in that usually load arm is longer than the effort arm there's something called shears shears are used to cut metal sheets and in this purposely they would have made load arm shorter but effort arm longer okay the fulcrum will be towards the load side so effort arm will be effort arm will be longer than the load arm so what will happen to your mechanical advantage so these are it's not pliers sorry shears so these are called shears for cutting metals so this is longer than this so ma will be effort arm upon load arm so because this is longer effort arm is longer than the load arm so ma will be greater than 1 so it will be used as a force multiplier okay whereas this is designed in such a way that it is used as speed multiplier because with a scissor you will be generally cutting what a paper or a cloth which is not so heavy you don't want to apply you don't have to apply so much effort for it right so you don't want it to be a force multiplier but you want it to be a speed multiplier you want to make your work faster little bit you cut and you want the paper to cut by a long distance so purposely they have kept the fulcrum here so that it will behave like a speed multiplier but shears are used for cutting metals It depends on the application this is used for cutting metals so you know metals cutting is not very easy okay lots of uh, effort is needed for that so purposely they made it as a force multiplier by keeping the fulcrum here i hope you understood this concept so first order lever can be used as a speed multiplier or a force multiplier so depending on the case now there is a question in exercise uh, which ke which came in one board exam explain why scissors for cutting cloth may have blades longer than the handles but shears for cutting metals have short blades and long handles so the answer will be as what i explain now okay so these are some of the ways the questions can be asked you can just go through it now coming to class 2 lever So you know, in a class two lever, load is in between fulcrum and effort. So mechanical advantage and velocity ratio are always more than one because of this. Effort arm will always be greater than the load arm, so M A will always be greater than one, and therefore it is always used as a force multiplier. Less effort, more work, large load can be lifted. Simply nut cracker, lemon squeezer, and all that we can. with a less force you can do a large work wheel barrow and all that are like that okay so then the third one class 3 lever so the structure is um fulcrum at one end effort in the middle load at the other end so what happens effort arm will always be greater than the sorry load arm will always be greater than the effort arm so what happens its ma and vr will always be less than 1 because its load arm is always effort arm is always smaller than the load arm effort arm is always smaller than the load arm so ma less than 1 then it is used to obtain gain in speed okay so the examples along with the applications are very important and then this one examples of um examples of each class of lever based on a human body as found in a human body so all these three applications also you can go through it they can ask this also okay next we'll quickly go to the numericals i think um uh, in that the previous video you didn't solve numericals quickly solve it the numericals are not very tough and they are quite simple so we'll start Okay, turn to page fifty-nine and question number five. 
a man uses a crowbar of length 1.5 meter to raise a load of 75 kgf by putting a sharp edge below the bar at a distance 1 meter from his hand so first of all you should know how does a crowbar look and what kind of lever it is so a crowbar is basically a a bar okay with which a huge rock or something can be displaced okay so this is the load and this is where the effort will be applied so load is here and usually the fulcrum will be somewhere here fulcrum will be somewhere here so first of all you should know you should be able to identify which class of lever does it belong to so a crowbar is a first order lever fulcrum and between load here and effort here okay uh, and it's given man uses a crowbar of length 1.5 meter the whole length of the crowbar is 1.5 meter and then to raise the load of this so load is 75 kgf by putting a sharp edge below the bar that is the fulcrum they are talking about at a distance 1 meter from his hand so this distance fulcrum is at a distance 1 meter from his hand so if this is 1 meter what will be this distance 0 0.5 meter because 1.5 minus 1 you have 0 0.5 meter so actually this 1.5 is neither effort arm nor load arm because that's a distance between load and effort okay so your effort arm will become 1 meter why that's the distance between effort and fulcrum and your load arm will become 0 0.5 meter because that's the distance between load and fulcrum that is 0 0.5 meter so um, now let's what all we have to find calculate draw a diagram so it's enough if you draw this one second B part state the kind of lever first order lever calculate load arm effort arm so effort arm and load arm and then MAN effort needed so we have to find the mechanical advantage mechanical advantage will be effort arm upon load arm so 1 by 0 0.5 so that will you will get 2 as the answer no unit remember that and then um, you have to find okay um, effort okay effort is the question mark so always you should apply principle of levers that is load into load arm equal to effort into effort arm so effort we don't know rest all we know so our load is 75 kgf you don't have to convert it into newton or anything keep it as kgf and the answer you're getting also will be in kgf load arm load arm is 0 0.5 meter is equal to effort is what we have to find and effort arm is 1 meter so your effort will be 75 into 0 0.5 upon 1 so 5 fives are 25 5 sevens are 35 37 so it will be 37.5 kgf okay so this is how this question has to be solved this is question number 5 next we will go to question number 8 I am going to solve question number 8 for you a lever of length 9 cm has its load arm 5 cm long and effort arm 9 cm long. See carefully. A lever is itself of length 9 cm and its effort arm is also 9 cm long. In which one do you think it's possible? Only in a third class lever. Because only in a third class lever fulcrum will be at one end and load will be at the other end. Sorry. load will be at the other end and effort will be in the middle effort will be in the middle so the length of this lever is 9 cm so the whole length is 9 cm and that is the load arm also I am sorry this is effort and this is load so this will be second order lever sorry class 2 lever so 9 cm is the total length and effort arm is also 9 cm that means effort will come to this end so that means load will be in the middle so this is a second class lever then load arm 5 cm distance between fulcrum and load is 5 cm this is the diagram what C part what is the mechanical advantage and velocity ratio if the efficiency is 100% so 
So first let's find MA. Effort arm upon load arm. So what is your effort arm? Effort arm is 9 cm and load arm is 5 cm. So 9 by 5 that is 1.8. So MA is 1.8. Then velocity ratio. There are two cases if the efficiency is 100%. So if efficiency is 100%. So we know that efficiency is MA by VR. So if this is 100%. Okay. Then 100 upon 100 is equal to MA by VR. 1.8 upon VR. So this is 1. So VR will also be equal to 1.8. Okay. So for the C part. For the C part. MA will also be 1.8. Velocity ratio will also be 1.8. But coming to the D part. What will be the mechanical advantage in velocity ratio. If efficiency becomes 50%. So D part. Efficiency is 50%. So efficiency is MA by PR is equal to 50 by 100. So, always remember velocity ratio will remain the same because the length of this particular lever is not going to change because of friction or anything. It's only the load and effort that's going to change. So, even though its efficiency is 50%, VR will always be 1.8 what you had in the beginning. The same will be the velocity ratio. It's only the MA that will change. Okay. So this is 1 by 2. So MA will be 1 by 2 into 1.8. That will be 0 0.9. So MA will be 0 0.9 velocity ratio. Always velocity ratio will be the same. Even if efficiency changes, velocity ratio will never change. This is something you have to always remember in a machine that velocity ratio will be constant only the MA will change. Then quickly turn to page number 308 that's a board question there 308 this is actually page number might be slightly different children it is paper 2016 solved okay the first question C part with reference to a mechanical advantage, velocity ratio, and efficiency. Name and define the term that will not change by a machine for a machine of a given design. See the answer: velocity ratio will not change. Efficiency and MA can change, but velocity ratio will never change for a machine. And then you have to define it. Define as ratio of distance traveled by effort to the distance traveled by load in the same interval of time. So this was one of the questions. So velocity ratio never changes is a very important concept. So try all the numericals in the A part. Okay, they are quite simple. There are only 10. Two I have already done. So try the remaining 8 numericals. Thank you.